Yo. 2009 Jeep Patriot. This thing has some overheating issues. Uh, the coolant level's fine. Pull the cap. Coolant level's fine. It came here working just fine. It didn't have a problem. The coolant fans are working. Um, apparently this person took it about on a 20-30 mile drive and it overheated and sh she let it cool down. Drove it back home and it was fine. The husband drove it here and it was fine. Everything was working. They said it did the same thing about a year ago. It overheated when it was at about 90 degrees out. They let it cool down and they drove it for a year and it was fine. So I can't find a problem. I'm going to attack the thermostats. In Jeep's infinite wisdom, they figured that two thermostats are better than one. Sometimes manufacturers do that. And I told him if he's got a problem again, if it overheats again after I put these thermostats in it, to leave the car running, get out of the car, and make sure that the fans are on and working, and then go from there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to find something wrong with these stats, though. We'll see. I can't really diagnose it because I can't find anything wrong with it, so I'm going to throw some parts at it and hope for the best. There's no current or pending codes on this and no check engine light either. Got a couple funky tabs here. You turn a quarter of a turn. And this comes out. Air box. There's a child proof connector on this air intake temp sender. You can pull this red tab back and unplug it. Sometimes you can just pop it out. 8 millimeter or regular screwdriver on this clamp. There's a breather hose here on the air box. I should be able to get this out. Air filter out. And I think this just pulls right out, straight up. There's three little tabs on it with little rubber grommets. On the passenger side of the vehicle, I'm gonna get at the petcock and the radiator. And it is, it's right there, you can barely see it. I'm gonna get at that from the bottom. I can squirrel my hand right down in here and get at it with a 19 millimeter socket and a ratchet I'm gonna to try to open it up that way it only turns like a quarter turn and while it turns it kind of pulls out so a lot of times I just kind of rock them back and forth and just kind of work them out if you try to force it sometimes they do goofy wonky stuff yeah I don't, I don't know why these radiator people do this but they always put a flat on these like you can get in here with a pair of pliers or something in it it never happens. I wish they just hex these things. So I'm just going to put this socket on here and hopefully I can get it to turn. I'm just rocking it and it's working its way out. These things are strange like that. And there, I got it good enough to where it can dribble out of there now. I'm just going to let that go for a long time. This thing's all done dribbling now. I just need to put it back in. I suppose if your ratchet is like too thick, you could always try to use a breaker bar too or I don't know, something. There's really not a lot of room in here. It doesn't need to be really tight either. Seems to go in easier than it comes out. I'm sure most people would just skip that part and put a pan underneath the truck and just take off the hoses and let coolant dribble all over the place, but I don't want to make a mess on my garage floor. I'm going to just take a bungee cord and just kind of lightly bungee that intake pipe out of the way I got a coolant temp sender here you got to push in this tab and just lift up on it and I got four hose clamps on these heater hoses I'm gonna take off gee I could have swore I just put that on 
I did. I did. Looking like I just have three 10 millimeters left here. I'm gonna take this shifter off. 13 millimeter. Oh, I'm gonna start a bolt here. Probably should have taken this off first. I'm gonna take this shifter nut off. It's gotta go back on in the same exact location. It appears to just have one wire on a loom here. I'm gonna unplug this. I think I can get this out of my way. Kind of like that. I might not have needed to take this off, but I did anyways. I'm just gonna rock this back and forth. Nice and easy until this pops out because there's an O-ring right here. And uh, I made a big mess again. And uh, thermostat fell out on me. I saved the easiest for last. There's another thermostat here. Just a couple of 10 millimeters. And there it is. I called the dealer about these parts and I got sticker shock. So I needed two thermostats, this seal and this O-ring right here. And then I was taking a good look at this and it's kind of starting to seep already. So instead of doing that, I just bought a whole dormant housing. It was actually less money than going to the dealer and just getting a couple of thermostats and a couple of gaskets. There's the part number. One thing I gotta do is get this sensor off of here. There's a tab right here you gotta lift up on and then turn it counterclockwise. And it comes right out. Like so. This Dorman part already has a thermostat that's in the housing. And the other one is out. And there's a bag with two O-rings in it. One of them's for that. I'm going to put some silicone paste on the, on the O-ring because it'll go in real easy that way, I hope. Might as well slather a little bit of it in here too. Just like that. Thermostat side goes down. I'm gonna put a little paste on this too. Put a little paste on this seal right here. It'll just help it slide around a little if it needs to. There's an O-ring on this pipe I'm gonna replace. Same deal, I'll put some silicone paste on this too. I put a little on the inside of the housing too so it slides on real nice. I'll scrape what little grungy crunge is on here. It's not really that bad at all. I don't think I need to get too carried away. It's a nice clean machine surface. I can go ahead and put this bag on. All I got to do is make sure that thermostat doesn't fall out. I'm actually going to torque these because I feel like it. I'll start with the center one. They're uh, 13 foot-pounds, which is, what, 156 inch-pounds. And the rest of this I'll just work like a quickie. Most of the time, whenever I put a shifter cable on, I just want to push on it and make sure it doesn't click out of park. Because um, that's a safety issue. It's always a good idea to put these clamps exactly on the same way as they came off. Little insurance to make sure it's gonna seal the same.
Okay, now I just need to take this cap off, put some coolant in it, fill it up. Then I'll run the car, get it hot, burp the system, make sure all the air is out of it, and call it a job. Okay, bye.